Hmm? What in the... Oh. It would seem I have a visitor. No, no. Don't move a muscle. You've already demolished my poor bed of lilies with your dirty feet. Look at the damage you've caused. Oh, these poor darlings. Hmm. <laughs> Seriously? You would draw your sword on the likes of me? Do you truly believe that you have any such right? You come into my home, damage my precious lilies, and you have the nerve to call me a monster. What? Does the tale suddenly make me dangerous? I don't even have a weapon. Oh, spare me the theatrics. Hypnosis requires an already peaceful mind to initiate. Being as high-strung as you are, there is no way I could do it to you. So please, don't waste your time by covering your eyes. See? No effect on you. Additionally, you have no need to fear my tale. While it is possible that it's powerful enough to keep you trapped if I called you up properly, I'm simply not strong enough to swing it around you and initially get you into that position. He would probably just dodge. Finally, humans, always being so difficult and refusing to see the reason. It's like you all have some innate Biological urge to control, pillage, and destroy everything they see. Why couldn't you just leave me alone? You heard that a Naga had been attacking innocent humans? Preposterous. I've not left my garden for even a moment within the last month. Hmm. Perhaps it borders on obsession. However, that is my business, human. Do you not believe in living in the letting live? Do you truly believe that I could bring harm to another? Look at me. I'm weak. I'm small. And I have no desire to fight. I've even been described as... cured by other humans. Yes. Other humans, if you truly must know, I have encountered the other humans you mentioned. Though, our interactions were far less what you've been told, 
and far more along the lines of... Oh, what a cute little snake. Get away. Don't step on my flowers. They'll die. Oh goodness gracious me. The snake dared to raise its stones lily with me. I would best run and yell that I was attacked. Uh, humans always try to make things out to be far worse than they seem. Also, for the record, I never so much as laid a tail tip on their hats. I had no reason to. They listened when I told them not to approach. And my flower garden has remained safe. At least until now. You were far quieter than the humans that came before you. Despite that clunky armor you're lugging around. How was that you were able to deceive my ears so well? Ah, oh, so you're also a mage. You used an illusion spell to muffle your sound? Clever. But what am I to do about my poor lilies? They'll never survive after being trampled by your large and uncaring feet. You will help me fix it. These flowers are unique and will take years to fully bloom if you were willing to help me replace them. Can you commit to the task? Ah, oh, I understand. Humans like yourself are far too busy with important things, like slaying dragons, and rescuing damsels in distress. Far too busy to be held accountable for their own trespassing. I sound mad. Oh no, 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 dear. I'm not mad at all. This is simply what one would call passive-aggressive behavior towards a very deserving recipient. Your constant apologies are getting on my nerves. If you were really sorry, you would do something about it. Well, if you're, quote, too busy to help me with replanting and raising my new flowers, you can at least assist me by plucking the flowers you've already managed to damage and bringing them to me 
so that I may properly utilize them. Hmm? Noticing an odd smell in the air? It's probably just the flowers you're picking up. Pay no mind to it. It's perfectly harmless, I assure you. You're feeling drowsy. Yes, that's to be expected. The flowers can induce that feeling among warm-blooded individuals. Bring them to me. Yes, they have a mild level of a sedative when inhaled, but it's not nearly enough to make you pass out. Why? They couldn't even do the same to a mere mouse. You're honestly being far too paranoid, as expected of a human. I'm tired of hearing you say that you're sorry. Frankly, I don't care that you are. What's done is done. Hmm? I assure you, those flowers cannot make you sleep. They only make you calm down. Here. Let me take a look at you. Oh. And be sure that you step around my precious flowers this time. Come closer, human. I can't feel your forehead if you're so far away. There. A little closer. <laughs> A little closer. A little closer. A little closer. Good. My eyes are changing colors. Oh, they always do that. Remember? I've been creating spirals in my eyes. Since the moment you've laid your own eyes on them. Are you sure? Well, maybe I haven't. But if you recall, you have no need to worry about them. After all, only a weak and calm mind can be hypnotized by them. You've got yourself a very strong and awake mind, right? You feel something coiling around your ankles? Hmm... It's probably nothing. You should probably focus more on your speech patterns. You're beginning to sound slurred. Are you sure you're alright? That's right. You have such a powerful mind. 
There is no way you could be persuaded to ignore the same sensation wrapping around your knees. You are fully aware of it, and you are in complete control. But, do you want to be in control? What do I mean? Mm, I just mean that it can be difficult to think at times, right? It's hard to be a paranoid human all the time. You focus on a threat, dangerous, work, and all the follies of life. Wouldn't it be better if you could simply ignore them? Well, human, you trust me, do you not? After all, you remember the proof I've shown you of my sincerity. I am no threat to you. You can trust me. You think my eyes are pretty. Good. I don't mind telling you now that you are a fool on three counts. Firstly, you were foolish enough to come barking in here without first checking to see if the claims against me were true. Secondly, you threatened me with a sword that I am now taking the liberty of removing from your person. Thirdly, you seem to have such a self-important ego that you failed to notice that I've been coiling and hypnotizing you this entire time. Struggle all you want, human. Your mind is far too broken to even break eye contact with me, let alone escape my coils. And every second your mind and body fall deeper and deeper into my grasp. Can you feel the tip of my tail wrapping around your forehead? That's to hold you in place. You won't be looking away from my eyes anytime soon. Save your slurred speech about people needing you for someone who cares. I only care about one thing. Compensation for the atrocities you foolishly committed. I'm going to ensure that your mind is properly adjusted. Until you agree to stay and help me replace what you've broken. No. I'm afraid that simply won't be enough. 
I still have to find a suitable punishment for your rude actions and for the distress you've caused me. Hmm. I believe I know what will rectify your transgressions. No. I'm not going to enforce any additional labor upon you. Other than what I require to fix what you've already broken. It'll be far more simple. I'll admit, I find it rather pleasant to restrain your warm blooded body in my tail. It can be so cold when not embracing an object. And you, you simply fit all too nicely within. As if you had been made specifically for it. I do also admit, it feels absolutely wonderful when you struggle and squirm fruitlessly within my coils. It feels much like a massage with my admittedly weak muscles being pressed and stretched out to their limit only to receive an instinctual burst of energy that allows me to return you to place. It's as if you were specifically designed by some deity to be bound in my coils forever. Yes, as an additional punishment for your abominable behavior. I'm going to have you be my personal heat, struggle, and cuddle source until a time I deem a fit. No arguing, no talking. I'm not interested in what you have to say. You will be my personal heater and cuddler. I want to hear you say it as well. Say, yes, mistress. Good. Now...